it was modular category O and parity themes. Um, so yeah, so, so thanks uh, to Jen and to, to all the organizers for, for asking me to speak here. Um, so so there's a, there, the, the phrase category O occurs in the title. Uh, it also occurred in Ivan's talk. Uh, the category O in my talk uh, is, is, is very different. But it has a lot of uh, features in, 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 in common with, uh, with, with the one that Ivan is describing, and, and also with the, the, the classical one from, from, uh, from complex Lie algebra. So I'll, I'll get into that later. But um, So what I want to talk about, uh, I, I think I'm going to start with uh, some, some, some background from, from is, is this large enough? Is that OK? OK. Um, so background from, from, from representation theory. Um, so here's, here's the, the, the rough plan. The, the first lecture is going to be about uh, representations of algebraic groups in positive characteristic. And I know that, that some people in this room, that, that, you know, that, that's your bread and butter. And maybe for other people, um, you've never heard of a characteristic other than zero, and it seems really scary. <laughs> so uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to um, um, hopefully make it um, you know, um, approachable if, you know, even if, if this is not something out of your mainstream. Uh, so th today is going to be yeah, re representation theory. Uh, my second lecture is going to be um, uh, basically algebraic topology related to the flag variety. And then in the third lecture, I'll, I'll try to combine these. <laughs> and um, a little bit later today, I'll, I'll tell you sort of what, 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 the, what the main point of all this is. So, so here's the, the, the setup. So, so G is going to be a, uh, a, um, a simply connected semi-simple algebraic group. Um, uh, over a field called K, so, uh, and K is going to be algebraically closed. And, um, of course, uh, Maybe the, the, the best example of a group like this is, 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 is SLN. Um, and then, uh, then there's some quite standard uh, Lie theoretic setup that comes with this. So B is going to be a Borel subgroup. Uh, T is a maximal torus. Um, uh, so I, I, I think for, for the things that I want to do, the most convenient Borel subgroup to take in SLN, if, if you're working with this example, is, is actually lower triangular matrices. Uh, and then uh, T, uh, I guess the, the sort of um, I, I, most common choice of torus is, is diagonal matrices. Uh, w is, is the vial group. So of course here, W is, is the, the symmetric group. Um, Capital X is the is the weight lattice. Uh, so for uh, so for SLN, um, the uh, one convenient way to write down a weight lattice is that it's n tuples of integers that, that sum to zero. Um, and these are these are. Uh, uh, th th these are the same as characters of uh, of, uh, of t, and then um, uh, and then inside here, uh, I want x plus to be the, the, the set of dominant weights, um, and uh, uh, m m maybe uh, sometimes it's better to focus especially on. On, on SL2. Uh, and for SL2, um, it, it, it's instead usually convenient to just, just identify the weight lattice with, with the integers, and then the, 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 the dominant weights are, are the, the, the non negative integers. Okay, um, and then uh, the, the letter P is, is going to be the, the, the characteristic of K. Um, for now, it can be anything. Um, in, in particular, so, so it has to be either zero or a prime number. So for now, uh, z zero is allowed. Um, uh, but later on, I'm, I'm going to uh, um, impose a restriction on it. L later on, I'm going to require the characteristic 
to be um, bigger than something called H, uh, which is the, 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 the Coxeter number of, um, of G. And the, the Coxeter number, if, if this is something that, um, it, 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 this is something sort of combinatorial that can compute from the root system. I mean, there are various ways to, to say what it is. Uh, so I, I think one way to say what it is is it's one plus the sum of the, the, the coefficients of the highest root uh, when you write it as a sum of simple roots. Um, there, there, there are lots of other ways. But uh, the, the main thing I want to mention is that for SLN, um, uh, the Coxeter number is n. So that's yeah, that, that that's really a note for 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 later on. Okay, so um, okay, uh, so for any uh, for any finite dimensional. Uh, G representation V. So, so whenever I talk about G representations, um, uh, I'm always going to mean that they're um, they're algebraic, uh, and they're they're also over over the same field. So, algebraic means that um, well, a representation is a, is a homomorphism from G to to, to GLN of something. And the formula for that for that homomorphism should should involve polynomials. Uh, and, yeah, I mean it should be an algebraic map. Um, okay, so for any finite dimensional representation, uh, you can you can look at its uh, character, uh, and that's called <coughs> ch of v. And ch of v is just uh, it's just a formal expression that records the, the dimensions of the weight spaces. Uh, so I'm going to take a sum over the weight lattice. Take the dimension of, of V lambda, so this is the, the lambda weight space of, of V time, times E to the lambda. And E, uh, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything here. E is just a, a placeholder symbol, um, uh, just to make it so that when you, when you multiply these things, the exponents here will add. So that, that's, that, that's what the E is doing there. OK, so, um, so there's a. There's a basic fact in, in, in Lie theory. So this is a fact for uh, semi-simple algebraic groups, but there's sort of the same fact in, in, in many other settings. It's also a theorem for um, you know, compact Lie groups or uh, complex semi-simple Lie algebras. And it's the, 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 the classification of, of um, irreducible re representations. And the theorem says that, uh, that um, uh, irreducible representations are classified by their highest weights, um, and that, that that highest weight is, is always dominant. So you send it, you, you, you send a uh, you send any irreducible to the largest lambda such that this this uh, weight space is non-zero, and that, that that's called the highest weight. And the notation I'm going to use is that if lambda is a dominant weight then the corresponding irreducible representation is going to be called L of lambda. Okay, so, um, so the basic problem um, so once you've classified the irreducible representations of, of something, then you want to uh, find out a little bit more about them, like find out their dimensions or something that's a little bit finer, finding out their, their characters. So the, 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 the the, the basic problem in, in representation theory of uh, algebraic groups in, in, in positive characteristic is, is to compute the character of L lambda. Um, well, I mean, not just in, in, in positive characteristic, in characteristic zero as well, but in characteristic zero, we already know the answer to this. Um, so I'll tell you the answer, but I'll give you a little bit of setup first. So, so there's some, some, some other... Um, um, representations uh, that you can um, associate naturally to, to a dominant weight when, when, once you've picked a, a dominant weight. And I, I want to give these some, some names. So there's one called N of lambda, and this is the, the dual vial module of, uh, of highest weight lambda. Uh, 
there's something else called M of lambda, uh, the, which is called the biomodule of, uh, of highest weight lambda. And then um, the, 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 fe the features of these, um, so let me write down some, some, some properties of, of these. Uh, So what is it that n lambda and m lambda are both uh, indecomposable? Um, and uh, another property is that um, uh, that l of lambda, the irreducible high sweet lambda, uh, is a subrepresentation of n of lambda, and moreover, it's the unique uh, irreducible sub subrepresentation. Uh, and then for m lambda, there's, there's a kind of dual property. So m lambda has a has this irreducible as a quotient. Uh, this is basically um, the, the 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 same thing that that um, we saw in in the setting of Varma modules in, in, in Ivan's talk. Um, so this is the unique irreducible quotient. Um, and uh, so these these n lambda these n's and m's in general. They themselves are, are not irreducible, but but uh, but we do know what their characters are. They're, they're, they're characters. There's a formula for them, um, so they have the same character even though they're usually not isomorphic. Uh, so the character of n lambda and the character of m lambda, these are both given by the, the, the following formula. Um, so they're, they're given by the vile character formula. So that, that's why they're that's why they have those names. Um, So if you, uh, uh, um, yeah, so, so both the numerator and the denominator, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess there, there are two things going on here. Uh, one is that um, this looks like a fraction, but actually it simplifies to just a, a polynomial in terms of, I mean, it simplifies to something with no denominator. Uh, and the expressions involve rho, so rho has the, the, the usual meaning it, uh, that it doesn't leave here, which is that it's half the sum of the, of the positive roots. Um, if, you've, uh, if you're not a positive characteristic person, uh, you've still, you, you've nevertheless almost certainly seen this formula somewhere. Um, you've seen it as the formula for the character of an irreducible. Uh, so what, what happens is that um, uh, if the characteristic of k is zero, then, uh, then everything gets a lot easier uh, N and M and L are, are all the same representation. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so this is called the, 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 the vile character. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, tell you a little bit about where, where the N's and M's uh, come from. Uh, One way to, to, to define n is, um, well, if you, if, you, if you go back to, to characteristic zero theory, um, you know, either for, for compact Lie groups or for, for complex algebraic groups, uh, one way th that you can produce all the, the, the irreducible representations is, is by the borel Bar theorem. And what the borel Bar theorem says is that if you want to produce the irreducible of highest weight lambda, you take a certain line bundle on, on, on the flag variety, and you take its global sections. Well, that construction makes sense even if you're in positive characteristics, but it doesn't give you something irreducible in general. Uh, so, um, so that's actually how you produce the, 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 the dual vial module. But the fact that it's kind of the, the same geometry, that explains why it has the same character formula. Um, so this is a line bundle. <laughs> Lambda. Uh, and then the, uh, um, uh, yeah, there's a, it, it, it's a little bit strange that somehow, I, I think the n lambdas are, they're easier to, def, to, to actually define, but the terminology somehow give, give, gives these guys a, a more complicated name. So the m lambdas are, are kind of the jewels of these. 
except if I literally wrote n, n of lambda dual, it would have the wrong highest weight. So what you have to do is um, multiply by the longest element of the vial group and then by, by, by uh, negative one. So, so W naught is the longest element of W. Um, okay, and then um, here's a... Yeah. So, uh, as we know, in positive characteristic representations of the algebraic group are not the same as representations of the real group, but you can remedy this, getting some kind of universal and relative out of these divided powers. And then, if you speak in this term, then while modules are easier to find, and they are defined yeah. just as finding a dimensional reducible modules they generate a simulation. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, okay. What, what do you mind saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll mention, um, I'll say a little bit about what, what these things look like explicitly for, for SL2. So for SL2, uh, there's uh, kind of a, 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 um, a standard, um, I don't know if I want to use the word standard because that sometimes has a technical meaning, but like there's a, a routine way to produce the irreducibles in a complex setting uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the, the action of matrices on, on polynomials in, in two variables. Uh, so, so SL2 acts on um, uh, po polynomials in, in two variables, x and y, um, by, by, by linear substitutions in, in, in the variables. Wait, something went wrong. Oh no, that's great. Okay. Um, uh, and um, of, of course, if you're doing a linear substitution, that's going to preserve the degree. So if I take homogeneous polynomials uh, of, of a fixed degree, say of degree uh, m, uh, then that, that space is preserved by this action. And the space of homogeneous polynomials of a fixed degree, this is the dual vial module of, of that highest weight. In characteristic zero, this is the irreducible of, of, of that highest weight. But in characteristic p, uh, it's easy to see that, um, that it's not. Uh, so so here, here, here's an example of this action. Um, in this action, if I take the matrix A, B, C, D, and I act on the variable uh, x, if I act on the polynomial x to the m, um, so this is homogeneous of, of degree m, but just to make it look like it's in two variables, I'll stick a y to the zero there. What I have to do is I have to plug in for these variables. Um, so I'll plug in for x using the first column, because ax plus uh, cy to, to the m. Uh, I guess I'll write down the other one, dx plus dy to the zero. So of course I, I, I leave that off, but if m equals p, um, then this simplifies, and characteristic p raising to the pth power distributes over addition, and this simplifies to a, uh, a to the m, x to the m, plus c, c to the m, y to the m. And in other words, um, this calculation shows that um, uh, the span of x to the p and y to the p inside n of p uh, is a, is a sub-representation. Uh, this definitely does not happen in characteristic zero. So this, this sort of tells you that, that, that n of p is definitely not irreducible. And just the, this span by itself, this, this equals L of p. So the, the irreducible of highest weight p in characteristic p is very small. It has dimension just, just two. Okay. Um. All right. Um, so, so the character of n lambda is, is, is something we know. So I said that the basic problem is to determine the, 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 the character of the irreducibles. So um, here, here's an easy observation. So the character of n lambda, well, n lambda is indecomposable and has some composition factors. So, so it has uh, uh, composition factors that are irreducibles with um, some, some, some highest weights. Uh, of course, any highest weight that occurs has to be smaller than or equal to lambda. And you can look at the multiplicity of, of such a composition factor. So you can take 
Um, yeah, so this is this is some multiplicity. Um, times the, the, the character of L mu. So, um, so the left side of this equation, we know what it is. It's the Weyl character formula. So um, if you knew the, the characters of L mu for all mu strictly smaller than lambda, then you could use this equation uh, to solve for, for the character of, of n of lambda. Um, so the, the, the point of this observation is that um, the, the basic problem is computing these characters, but it, uh, oh, sorry, if you knew these, these, these characters and the multiplicities, um, and you can do this kind of, kind of by induction. So, um, so, the, so something that's equivalent to the basic problem Is, is to compute these, these multiplicities. Compute n lambda colon L of mu. Okay, so, um, so here's, a, here, here's a, an, an overview of what's, what, what's coming up. Uh, so for this problem of computing the, the, these multiplicities, um, there, around 1980, Lustig proposed a conjecture uh, um, in, and it's in terms of uh, so-called affine Kajan Lustig polynomial. And this conjecture is uh, is a is a theorem for uh, wh when the character is is, is extremely large uh, by 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 various people. So, so mainly, well, a a Anderson, Janssen, Zirkel, but but, but build, building on the work of, 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 of many others. Um, so the, I, I'm not going to say very much about about the, the the general form of this conjecture. So the main focus. Um, for for my lectures is going to be something called called Zirbel's modular category O, and it's a it's um, it's kind of a, a, a smaller, more manageable version of the representation theory of G. Uh, so it's, um, it's it's smaller and more approachable in some sense. Um, one thing is that it involves um, finite Kajan Lustig polynomials instead of affine ones. Uh, but in, in any case, they're, they're definitely, it inherits some features from, from, from the, 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 the full representation theory. And Lustig's conjecture um, implies something about, uh, uh, implies something about the, the, the structure of. Um, of, of this modular category O. Um, but one, 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 one key feature of modular category O that the full representation theory lacks is that it's relatively straightforward uh, to get from um, the, 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 the structure theory of O to, um, to sheaf theory on, on, on the flag variety. And sheaf theory on the flag variety is uh, where um, the, the really dramatic thing happens. So, so I think um, one of the most important developments in, in um, representation of your algebraic groups in, in the past decade was the discovery by Jordy Williamson of a large family of counterexamples to this conjecture. And I think um, it's hard to overstate how big a shock this was. So I think Lustig's conjecture had a sort of uh, you know, it was already known since the 90s to be true when the characteristic is very large. People expect it to be true when p is bigger than, than the Coxeter number. And I think this idea was um, in the back of everyone's mind for, for, for more than 30 years. And the, the counterexamples were, were uh, completely unexpected. Um, but now that they're there, it, um, it's, it's not uh, so complicated to, 
to, to see the idea of, of, of how they are constructed. Um, so, so, so this is this chief theory on, on G mod D. This is the setting for Williamson's counterexamples. So by the third lecture, I, I want to uh, yeah, I want to get to to to, to saying how, how how these counterexamples come up. Okay, um, are there any questions so far? Uh, um, okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so so AJ AJ has they don't have an effective wall down there. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I should probably add Phoebe's name to, 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 the, to that as well. Um, yeah. So what was what was done in the '90s proved that the Lustig conjecture is true when the when the prime is large enough. But the meaning of the word large enough, um, I, I mean, it, it, it didn't give you a way to figure out what what, what counted as large enough. And then in the 2000s, Phoebe kind of uh, redid this work and uh, gave an explicit bound. And the bound is enormous. Like I think for SL9, Tvix bound is something like 40 digits long, uh, which is much bigger than the number nine. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now um, I'm going to tell you what, what, what category O is. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to start with. Uh, uh, Something related to so, so the principal block. Um, by the way, I, I should probably write in the word extended principal block. Um, I, I, I think I, I, experts in the audience will complain that what I'm about to write down is, is not what, what's called the principal block in, in Janssen's textbook, for, for example. Um, uh, so the notation for this is, 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 is rep 0g. And it consists of uh, representations. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm implicitly always looking at finite dimensional representations. So it consists of finite dimensional representations um, whose composition factors uh, all have a particular form. Uh, <coughs> so I, I want them to be the form L of mu, where mu, so the formula for, for mu is that it has to look like some element of the vial group times p times nu uh, plus rho minus rho. So I'm trying to be careful to distinguish between the prime p and the, uh, the, the thing which is a half sum of the positive roots. And here, uh, w is anything in the vial group, and nu is any weight. So in particular, nu does not have to be dominant. You can take a non-dominant weight as long as the end result comes out to be dominant. Um, and this is a this is a kind of funny looking formula, although it's not so funny looking if you're if you've seen things like um, the linkage principle either in this setting or or for Lie algebras before. And um, I, I won't get into what the linkage principle is exactly, um, but it implies that um, if if you have lambda, let, let me call this star. So if lambda is um, of the form star, then the vial module and dual vial module of, of that highest weight, um, all their composition factors also have highest weights of this form. So, so they belong to the principal block. Um, so next, I want to um, introduce a bit of notation. I'm going to let st be the Steinberg weight. What was the example where nu wasn't dominant? Oh, I, I mean, if nu is not dominant, um, you, you just choose your w. You can choose a w to make it dominant. So that, that's, uh, yeah, that's the, the, the flavor of it. So. Um. so the Steinberg weight is p minus 1 ti times rho. And this is this is this is not in um, the, the or, or this is not a, not, not of the, the form of star. So this is a dominant weight, but it doesn't give you something in the principal block. But uh, if you take any element of the vial group, uh, the Steinberg 
weight plus w times rho is of the form, uh, is dominant um, and of the form uh, star uh, with a caveat. So, so for it to be dominant, you need p to not be small. And so now's where I'm, I'm close the assumption. So from now on, um, if p is bigger than h. Okay. Um, so, so of course, uh, um, this irreducible belongs belongs to the principal block, um, and the 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 largest possible weight you can get here is when w is trivial, and that's just the Steinberg weight plus plus rho. And so now we want to define. Um, Two, two categories. So curly A consists of representations in the principal block um, where all the composition factors are um, look like L of mu, but um, so, so when I say it's in the principal block, I'm already requiring mu to be of this form, and I'm going to further require mu to be less than or equal to the Steinberg weight plus rho uh, in, the, in the usual uh, comparison order on, 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 on weights. And then curly B is uh, even more restrictive. Um, so I'm going to take representations just in curly A. So it's got to be in the principal block and satisfy this condition. Um, and the composition factors are, are L of mu, but now I want mu, I want to get rid of everything of this form. So I want mu to not be in the Steinberg weight plus the, the Weil group time, time, times rho. Okay. Uh, H can be prime, uh, and there, um, uh, there, 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 there are various things that, that come up in the subject where sometimes p greater than or equal to h is okay, and sometimes it's not. And I, I haven't been, I haven't really kept track of what, what, whether the, the strict inequality is really needed here. But, but it's yeah, I guess it's safer to stick to the strict one. Can you remind me where h came from? Uh, when I needed um, uh, Steinberg, I, I want st plus w rho to be always a dominant weight for, for all w. I guess, uh, what, how did you define h? I don't, that's what oh, I don't h was, um, the, it was like 1 plus the sum of the coefficients. OK, of the right, right, right. OK. Are you going to talk about examples in curly b? Sorry? Are you going to talk about examples in curly b? Examples in curly b? Yes. Uh, not really. I just want to get rid of curly b. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, the, the, yeah, so the, the, the definition of um, modular category O is uh, curly O is um, the quotient of A by B. So quotient categories are maybe something that, that um, may not be familiar to, to, to everyone. Uh, so this is, this is um, probably called a Sayre quotient or something. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what, what, what it is. So, so the, the, the objects of, of, of O are the same as the objects of A. Uh, but I'm gonna. It's it's gonna be convenient to to distinguish be, between them. Um, so uh, so if, if X is an object of, of A, uh, I'm gonna write a bar over it um, to be the, the same object in in, in O. So so that, that that's just to, to tell you the content context rather. Um, the morphisms are a little bit complicated. Um, um, so the morphisms, uh, the, the formula is, is, is this. Maybe I'll write it over here. 
Um, so, so if I take two objects, x and y, in, in, in A, and I want to compute hum between them in, in O, uh, the, the, the formula is that I need to take some kind of limit of, of hums in, in A, where I basically I want to ignore stuff in B as much as I can. And so what that means is that um, uh, I, I could replace x by a subobject. Uh, so x prime could be a submodule of x such that the quotient uh, is in B. And then over here, I want to take a, a, a quotient by something that, that is in B. Uh, uh, that, that, that is in, in, um, in B. Uh, so in other words, I, yeah, I want to ignore quotients of x that are in B, and I want to ignore submodules of y that, that, that are in B. Um, so this is a complicated looking thing, but... May I make the mark? Yeah? It's not complicated because all of us have finite lambs. Yeah. You don't really need to write limits. Well, okay, okay. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, so, so the, the, this is like the general categorical definition. Um, but uh, since, um, yeah, these are finite dimensional representations, so, so everything has finite length. So, uh, so uh, x prime should really be the uh, largest subobject, um, so, sorry, the smallest subobject such that the, 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 the quotient is, is, is in B, and y prime should be um, the, the largest subobject that, 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 that lives in B. Um, but, but also in, 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 in practice, um, you, you know, uh, if you have some, some module X that has no quotient in B at all, then you, you don't have to make any replacement. And I think that, that's how you end up computing these, these you know, for, for, for like when, when you want to get your hands on something. Um, you, you, you try to choose objects in A that have either no quotient or no subobject in B, and then the, the, there's no replacement to make at all. It's the same as computing something in, in A. Okay. Um. So can you say that again? If there's no quotient, the hum is just the x prime. You should take it to be just x. If if yeah, so if x has no quotient in B, then um, the unique x prime with this property is x itself. So the only thing so so you you don't vary this at all. Similarly, if y has no submodule contained in B, then or no non-trivial non submodule, then the unique submodule with this property is zero, so you, you make no change here either. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so the, 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 the easy case is um, uh, x has uh, no quotient in B, and, and y has no uh, submodule. So um, here are some, some more definitions. Um, so I'm going to name, name some specific objects in, in category O. So in category O, I'm going to take, I'm going to define, uh, so take an element of the